Today, I'm going for a walk to take some photos. While I do this nearly every day, sometimes it's exhausting. Not as much physically as it is mentally, because there's plenty of stretches where I'm unable to produce any phenomenal work and that starts to wear on you after a while. It's at those times when an outside boost of inspiration is needed to combat those feelings. This week, I found that inspiration in Austin Kleon's book, Keep Going. And I wanna to talk to you about how it inspired me to keep going in spite of my failed work this week and take more steps towards that 10,000 hours they say are needed to become an expert. This week I had a hard time really getting myself out there to do the photography work that I know I should be doing. So this book helped inspire me to do that. And I wanted to share with you how it helped me, what I got out of it, and how that might help you in your creative pursuits, whatever they may be. In this chapter, Cleon talks about the regular walks he takes through his neighborhood with his family and how that can be both therapeutic and beneficial in shaking off the cobwebs and coming up with new ideas. He goes on to talk about well-known creatives and thinkers who use movement and walks to help generate new ideas, complete work they've had in progress, and help with their overall mental state. Aside from helping us deal with internal conflict and strife, walks can also help us stay away from the distractions that force us to procrastinate and not get anything done. This week, going out and taking photos was a bit of a struggle because Thailand is either always scorching hot, raining cats and dogs, or if you're incredibly lucky, both at the same time. This can make it incredibly easy for me to come up with a million excuses to not go out and shoot photos, especially when the only time I really have to do this is after work. And going out in that kind of weather when you have no real guarantee of getting anything good makes it a little bit difficult. So on one of the rainier days that eventually ended up turning into one of the hotter days, I went out and shot anyways. I did this by doing some of those panning shots to capture motion. It's a different way to show some of the ridiculous situations that come up with the motorbikes here when the rain comes out. I just focused on the reflections and textures that I saw coming up and didn't really put a lot of intention into what I was shooting. And it helped take my mind off trying so hard to create a masterpiece and just get back to why I started doing photography in the first place, because it's fun. Did I get any amazing photos out of it? Definitely not. Was it worth going out and shooting? 100% yes. Will this become a regular part of my photographic process? Maybe, but probably not. Even if you're not feeling it every single time that you go out, it's necessary to go out as much as humanly possible and put in the reps if you want to eventually build up to a quality body of work. Alex Webb is one of the best to ever shoot street photography and he said that 99% of the medium is failure. So if you look at how expansive his body of work is and what he's been able to publish and produce, you have to imagine how many photos he discarded because he just didn't think they were good enough to make the cut. If you want to build up a body of work, you're always gonna complete projects and start new ones. According to Cleon, if you wanna do this and build up momentum without burning out, all of the prolific artists he knows have figured out a daily practice, a repeatable way of working that insulates them from success, failure, and the chaos of the outside world. They have all identified what they wanna spend their time on and they work at it every day, no matter what. Whether their latest thing is universally rejected, ignored, or acclaimed, they know they'll still get up tomorrow and do their work. So if you can live in the now, come up with a daily practice, avoid dwelling on past regrets or fears of the future, then you'll be able to keep going on your creative journey. This chapter essentially breaks down to this. It's impossible to claim you're any kind of artist without first putting in the work to be that kind of artist. 
And to do this, you'll probably have to create work that absolutely sucks for a long time before you create the work you want to, to claim you're that kind of artist. You might get lucky from time to time, but it's the process of doing that separates the haves from the have nots and helps us to create work that we want to be creating on a more consistent basis. Cleon relates all of this to kids at play. Their best play, however, is acted out with a kind of lightness and detachment from their results. And it's engaging with this kind of growth mindset where we enjoy the process for the process sake that can help us benefit most in our creative journeys. To push myself into this process, I went to try a form of street photography that I rarely attempt, which is documentary photography at the Bangkok Pride Parade. I tried my best, came away with some okay photos, nothing extraordinary, but it was definitely worth it. This was a fun event to shoot. There's a completely positive vibe there and seeing people completely in their own element, being who they want to be and supporting something that they're proud of really gave me the opportunity to reflect on my own work and how maybe eventually it can do something significant and contribute positively to society in some way, shape or form, as well as contributing to the positivity of my own mindset. This chapter really resonated with me because of how much it has to do with street photography specifically because it mostly focuses on being content with what you have around you to create art every day and being able to find beauty in the mundane. This chapter made me think about the work of Fred Herzog and how he captured Vancouver, a city that people really don't go out of their way to go shoot street at specifically. And he was able to make such amazing work over the years because he just kept going at it in his own town making work with what he had. In Cleon's words, this is exactly what an artist does. By paying extra attention to their world, they teach us to pay more attention to our own. The first step towards transforming your life into art is to start paying more attention to it. I highly suggest picking up any of Austin Cleon's books. They're super easy to digest and just fun to read pick up on a whim and go back over any of the lessons that we as artists and people need to learn over and over and over again. If you got anything out of this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep developing.